Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be working question three of chemistry paper two from the January 22 sitting. Let's get right into it. Question 3A. Compound A is a straight chain hydrocarbon with the molecular formula C5H12. Now that's very important. C5H12 is um, an alkane. It's pentane to be exact, C5H12. So that means the general formula there would be CNH 2N plus two. So that's the alkane, that's from the alkane series, that's pentane. State one natural source and the two uses of compound A. So the natural source is petroleum, or you could say crude oil. Crude oil and petroleum are the same thing. Um, the other source is um, natural gas, but they ask for one. Um, two uses, it's used, pentane can be used as an organic solvent. It can also be used as a, as a fuel. Could also be used as a refrigerant, but only two. Part two, draw the fully displayed structure of compound A. So we're drawing the fully displayed structure of pentane. Pent means five, and of course, in is the last name, telling us it's from the alkene series. So there will be no carbon-carbon double bond. It's it's a saturated hydrocarbon. So we need five carbon atoms and we're going to adorn them beautifully with their hydrogens. Drawing this can be therapeutic. Part B, thermal and catalytic cracking are very useful processes in the petrochemical industry. Part one, define the term catalytic cracking. So this is the this is the breaking of long chain hydrocarbons into smaller ones using a catalyst. So catalytic cracking is the breaking of long chain hydrocarbons into smaller ones using a catalyst. And you know, very important here, um, they said useful, but um, we'll look more into that in a bit. State the, importance, state the importance of catalytic cracking in petroleum refineries. Now, Long chain hydrocarbons, you know, are not very useful. There are very few things you can do with them. So catalytic cracking results in the formation of smaller, um, smaller hydrocarbons or hydrocarbons with shorter chains, which are more useful. They can now be used as precursors for other reactions or even fuels. All right, so that's it, part C. Ethene undergoes a halogenation reaction to form 1,2-dichloroethane. Draw the fully displayed structure of 1,2-dichloroethane, right? So this is ethane with a chlorine on each carbon. So I'll just put a chlorine on opposite sides. Doesn't matter where, as long as each is on, as long as there's a chlorine on each, each carbon. Right, and just so we can appreciate where that is coming from, it would have been the addition of a halogen to ethene. So ethene is this right here, that's its displayed formula, that's C2H4. So we would need to cut, just using black carbon, um, just to show that we're cutting um, one of the bonds there in the double bond. And then what we do next, we would need to add chlorine to this. So severing the bond in the middle means that or means that each carbon atom now has a space for one more bond. So the chlorine could be added. We're not focusing on the mechanism. We're just looking at in a sense, how it occurs, but not getting too much on the molecular level. All right, so that's where it's coming from. It would have been added to it. All right, so once we have what's in the box, we're good to go. Two marks. Part D, dichloromethane can be obtained from methane. This reaction takes place in two steps. Part one, right? Balance chemical equations to show each step in the formation of dichloromethane. Right, so let's just get right into it. So methane, CH4, which is a gas, and we're going to need our chlorine, Cl2 gas. 
No dichloro, di means two, okay, not necessary. Now, this reaction is taking place in the presence of UV light. UV light will be used to split the chlorine to give us what we call chlorine radicals, but not, not getting into the um, scope of that right now. So what will happen here pretty much will have um, chlorine taking the place of one of the hydrogen. So instead of having CH4, we're going to have CH3. And where one of the hydrogen was, we'll have chlorine being there. So this is, this is now chloro, chloromethane. And the other product would be hydrogen chloride, HCl, which is also a gas. So they left the... One of the chlorine goes and takes the place of a hydrogen and the other chlorine now bonds with the hydrogen that's removed or that was substituted to give us hydrogen chloride. So in step two, this is like a chain reaction. It goes on and on. So the product, the chloromethane from, from the product here in step one is used as a starting material in step two. So we would start off with CH3Cl, which is a gas in the presence of more chlorine. So we would need chlorine again, gas in the presence of UV light. The so UV light is used to split the chlorine into two. And then we're going to, we're going to have substitution occurring again. So we know, we'll now have CH2 and we've replaced one of the hydrogen with another chlorine. So it would now be Cl2. And this now is a liquid, the density is increasing. And again, we'll end up with hydrogen chloride, HCl gas. All right, the said dichloromethane. So two chlorines would be on the methane instead of the four. This could go on to give you a trichloromethane and a tetrachloromethane, but the total store show how dichloromethane is formed. So we stop right there. State whether the halogenation of part two, state whether the halogenation of methane is an addition or a substitution reaction. And we saw what, what was happening there. Chlorine took the place of hydrogen, just like in football. So, so this was a substitution reaction. And that would have given you one more mark and a total of 15 marks, so just like that. Now, if you missed um, question one and question two from this paper, then be sure to check out the cards um, above for those and look out for question four. Thank you for joining. Couple later.